In this video, what I'm going to be doing is going over my build of a film synthesizing tank. And uh, what we're going to be doing is making this for an 8x10 sheet of film. So you do 8x10 or, or smaller. Um, and for tin types, ambro types, uh, anything like that for wet, wet plate uh, uh, photography. Um, the interesting thing here is I've been, I've been building everything uh, up to this point. I've built a camera, a Lightroom. Nothing has given me as much trouble as this damn box here. Uh, I have built, uh, the, the, what I'm going to be doing is starting from scratch on the actual, the, the third iteration of the build. So um, bear with me, it's, it's, it's a learning process. Uh, the cool thing is I've learned a lot of things as I've, I've gone through, so hopefully I can uh, relay some of those things to you, and uh, maybe you won't make some of the same mistakes that I've made. This is the second tank that I've built, um, and it has a uh, uh, significant flaw in it in the fact that it's not watertight. But uh, I'm going to go over some of the ideas that uh, um, I, I came up with for, for the build. The first thing is, um, I like the idea of having uh, a handle on the top. Uh, eventually it, will, it should tilt like that uh, uh, so that uh, it's, it's pretty stable when you put, put your film into it. The film it's designed for is essentially eight and a half by eleven. So this this is an eight and a half by eleven sheet. So you can see it's a little taller. I intentionally made this uh, I made this fourteen inches. You give me just a little extra room, uh, especially when you're til tilting down. Uh, so it, you got a lot of flexibility in there. Um, it might it, I think it might be just a little bit too big. It holds a hell of a lot of liquid. Well, when it's watertight, it holds liquid. Um, so this this was uh, what that's about eleven inches maybe you know, maybe ten inches across. Let's see, it was ten inches. So yeah, so it's about eleven inches across, eight and a half, fourteen inches this way. Uh, so there's plenty of room for uh, any type of film that you want to put in there. One of the things that I've done here is I put latches on the sides so that I lift it up with the handle and it'll hold on the inside here I'll throw this open I created a, a, a two level um, door on the top fits on and had I done it just perfectly it would fit uh, both, both ways you know seamlessly but uh, it just has a little gap there but that's that's quite all right uh, so I found, I found a cool way of doing uh, building this and centering it that I'll show in the video uh, later on. The inside of the tank, uh, I've just got basic plywood on the, on the outside. I have a, a half inch here and a quarter inch uh, panel here. I used the half inch on the edges so that I'd have something uh, to glue and nail to. So I decided to go ahead and glue this on and then nail it on, um, but I'm not penetrating the inside. On the inside here, I've used essentially a clear plexiglass. Uh, I use a quarter inch, uh, thinking that uh, it, it, not necessarily for strength, but it would just be a lot easier to put a, uh, a bead of glue on here and affix it and put it in there. So it's just a plastic uh, acrylic. I picked up a sheet of this. It was uh, 18 by 24. At, at the Lowe's Hardware for like uh, I think it was twenty bucks, so it's relatively inexpensive. You can cut it on your table saw, uh, which I recommend as opposed to you know, using a box knife uh, and then just you know, scoring, 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 and to break apart. So all of all of my cuts were really, really nice along the edge because I used the table saw. So on the inside, that's where I have this plexi. Uh, it's black right now, and I'll explain that in just a minute. But uh, uh, the idea is I've got uh, essentially uh, you know, the front plates and then inset from the front plate is the, the side. And then I cut an additional side so that I have this um, um, uh, L-shape seal on there. And that's what I thought would take me over the top and make it, make it watertight. Uh, when I assembled it, I put a bead of, I'm using uh, aquarium sealant. Um, and I try to be very careful about you know making a consistent uh, seam all the way across it. Um, it didn't work, uh, obviously. 
um, uh, um, assembly on this is, is actually kind of, kind of difficult. So, and I'll go into that in just a minute. You know what what the version three is going to be. So it's got it's got a it's got a bottom that's plexi. The two sides uh, with the, the four sides here are plexi. The other thing is once I assembled this and got it got it together. I thought, and it, I did watertight test, and it leaks like a damn sieve. So um, I, since this is glued and screwed and all that, yeah, I'm not I'm not able to recover it um, and go back into it. Uh, I should have tested the watertight ability of the plexiglass before I built the box on it, but I was impatient. Um, so I went. You know, this is this guy's uh, Paul Swift uh, Flex Seal. You see the guy. He puts it on the uh, on the bottom of a damn boat and it can float in the river. Uh, that is bullshit. Excuse my French, but that is bullshit. I put two coats of that stuff on the inside. Both coats allowing 24 hours to dry in between before I apply. You know, did any water testing or anything like that. Let it fully dry. Um, threw some water in there, and all it has to do is for a seam like that, I'm put it on camera, for a seam like that that is already has a, um, uh, a seal on it, a, a, a small seal on it, it could, it didn't, uh, it didn't keep it watertight. So um, if you get this stuff before you open the cap up and send it back uh, and use it, just take it back. It is, it is a waste of damn money. All right. Okay, so this was version one. This is my first version box, um, and what I tried to do, I used the same same material, uh, building it with the the plexi, and uh, it, but uh, before I tried the aquarium sealant, I tried uh, a two part epoxy, and uh, put it on there. That that was just nasty. I I can't paint well with uh, uh, epoxy, and so that that was just a bad bad call. And I only had the one uh, layer on here. Um, what I originally uh, had in mind of doing was when you know I, I had it together, and uh, I was going to essentially cut it in half, try and seal back up these edges, and then maybe come back up. And then I was like, that's just a waste of time. So, but it does give a nice little cutaway of what's on the inside. And here's where I was practicing with the. Uh, the Flex Seal, crap, don't buy. Um, you know, one coat, two coat, three coats, and seeing it, it adheres, it holds on, and I don't understand why it is just not making a watertight seal uh, along these edges here. So, but that uh, gives you a, a kind of an idea of the, the construction on this. So starting with version 3 now, uh, I decided to give up, uh, my, give up on my ability to make something watertight. And I figured somebody else can probably do it a hell of a lot better than I can. Uh, I looked around for some different things and I came up with essentially two different ideas. Uh, both of them actually, if you go to the container store, not that I'm endorsing them or anything like that, it's just that's where I was able to find it. Uh, I found two things I, was, I, was, I had possibilities. The, and remember, the idea here is to make a watertight uh, interior and then I'm going to put a, a case around it. So the structure of the, the uh, water tight part doesn't have to be that, that, uh, that strong. It just has to be able to uh, keep the, the chemicals on the inside. Uh, the first thing that I found that I thought was kind of interesting, this, this was like nine bucks. It, uh, it's a, um, uh, basically a water cooler. You put uh, liquid Kool-Aid, whatever, in your refrigerator and it slides in. It has a spigot on the bottom. Uh, the, what I liked about this was it is the right size for my eight and a half by 11. It's a little tight on the sides. And effectively what I would do is cut the top off here, so exposed 
the outside, I still have this uh, this fill hole here, so I would just uh, I would glue glue that up, and then um, uh, when I have the box around it, make sure that uh, that's that's covered up, so it, it won't be in, in yeah, it won't be an issue. Um, but uh, I, I like this because it's, it is made it is specifically made to hold hold liquid and hold it securely. So I feel confident that the edges on there will hold. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is um, it, it's pretty thin, which makes it a little bit lighter. But uh, um, so as I'm putting wood and stuff on there, I could impinge on it, and um, makes me a little bit a little bit nervous. Um, and uh, um, so. I'm going to debate on whether or not to do that. The, the cool thing here is, and I'll show the little tag on there if you can see it. Um, it's uh, nine bucks and uh, uh, ten bucks at the container store. The other thing that I found that I thought was interesting, because this is more in a line with what I was originally planning to build uh, design-wise, they have these uh, acrylic uh, drawers. I don't know what purpose they, they serve, but essentially they're designed to, uh, you sit on your desk and I guess you put uh, stuff that you want to see on the inside, whatever the justification is. Uh, this was much more expensive. This was, uh, uh, my receipt says uh, this was 25 bucks, uh, but it's, and it's, it's a little smaller. This is the in, inside drawer. And so it's a little bit smaller, so I don't have as much wiggle room. Uh, for uh, the, the plate, which may be a good thing, maybe a bad thing, not sure. Uh, but it is definitely not designed to hold liquid. So, what I've been doing for the past uh, uh, day is I put some liquid on the inside. I, fill, I filled it to capacity um, and then put some liquid, uh, some uh, blue food dye in there and of course put it into a container in case it does leak and I just let it sit to see if in fact it is waterproof and by golly it is so as um, um, what, so what I'll do is I'll take I'll, I'm, I think I'm gonna go with this one I'm, I'm making this decision on the fly but I, I like I like this uh, this design it's it's much more straight I don't have to accommodate the side hole um, and it's, it's pretty good the, um, the other cool thing here is I'm going to try and do, uh, when you put your film into the tank, you need to be able to, to dip it. So this is, comes with a drawer. Um, I obviously can't use the drawer as is because the water would spill out. But what I'm thinking about doing is cutting this down so that I have a, 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 dip, a dipper that I can put in and the bottom, this bottom fits straight into the side there. Just like that. Don't knock it over. I'll get blue dye everywhere. But uh, so it should it should hold it. And the other thing is uh, this is it's a little bit narrower, just a little bit. Uh, this box is as opposed to this, so it requires less less chemicals um, to fill it up. All right. So we've done we've done a waterproof test on this. I feel confident that this this is going to hold the water fine or the chemicals fine. And uh, so the next step is I'm going to start cutting down some pieces so I can make sides uh, and a bottom and hold that uh, hold that tight. Before I begin cutting down some wood, I just wanted to kind of go over the the basic construction on, on how I plan to make this happen. Take this off using the the second failed design as uh, uh, give an idea of how it's supposed to work. So e essentially, this side is going to correlate with that side. So I'm going to do a half inch uh, um, plank that way. I'm going to cut for this side and that side, and then I'm going to uh, cut some paneling that'll fit. Uh, the, the sides and the bottom um, I'm going to cut a, a piece that will fit inside here so that will um, uh, give it um, uh, you know, a nice nice little seal and protect it along the bottom. Uh, along the edges uh, I, I don't typically use nails uh, but uh, I'm going to with this one anyway just because it was easier didn't have enough clamps but I'm going to glue it around the edges and then nail it 
on there. Because I've been burned uh, th twice now, I'm very paranoid about the structural integrity of, of this box. So what I've decided to do, not for waterproofing, but essentially just, just to provide some, uh, some structural integrity to it, and just in case I'm bending it, I don't want to you know, run the risk of it separating and pulling apart. Uh, I'm going to use, uh, I'm just going to line the whole, everything on the outside with uh, some Gorilla Tape. So here we go. The box is taped up using again the the gorilla glue the gorilla glue tape. Um, I've not used this before, but uh, I've used some of their other products. And I've been pretty happy with them, so uh, might just be falling to the hype. I don't know, but hey, it makes me feel good. Um, <clears throat> so here's the bottom. Uh, you'll notice that I lined up the seams here, so we don't have uh, uh, pieces that overlap like that. They're edge to edge um, around the sides here again like I said before this is not for waterproof this is just for structural integrity the other thing that I did and I learned this from the last box that I built is I put a, um, a bead around the top or a, a strip around the top not for the structure integrity uh, though I guess it would hold it from you know going in the, that direction but when I make my measurements for putting the, um, the front and the sides on I want the, the depth here to be the same depth as here, so um, just being a little anal retentive, but I'm entitled to do that. So the next part. If you thought I wasn't paranoid enough about chemicals leaking out of this, um, I'm going to take it to, to the absolute next level. Um, I'm, because I've been burned so many times, I'm just not taking any more chances with this, this stuff. And I'm going to take a contractor bag. This is a two mil um, industrial heavy duty contractor bag. And I'm going to put the box into the bag, um, shape it to the sides, and make sure that uh, uh, even if this does decide to leak, it's going to have a layer of plastic around it. It's going to add some bulk to it, especially when I put, the, uh, put it into the uh, um, sleeve that I, the wooden sleeve that I'm going to build, but uh, again, I'm just paranoid about it. So to hold it to this, uh, I'm going to make sure that I keep the integrity of the bag uh, around the edges. I'm going to just cut it, cut it down the edge here, overlap it, wrap it, and just make sure it's an even density around the whole thing. Um, but I'm going to use uh, just a simple spray adhesive on here just to tack the plastic to here long enough that I can get, uh, get a wood frame around this. So at this point, I don't know if that's going to be a help or a hindrance, but I can guarantee you if there comes out the bottom there, it ain't coming out anywhere around here. Uh, it might leak out the top, but that's just got to be the way it is. Um, so at, at this point, I'm going to leave it like this. It looks a little uh, um, ganked up, um, but I... I don't know a better way to do it at this point. So as I put the, as I start putting the sides on and measurements, that I can see is going to be a little bit of a problem. But uh, I might, I might end up removing this plastic. But uh, but it makes me makes me feel good right now. <laughs> 